The 2008 Computer Pioneer Award is presented to Ms. Betty Jean Jennings Bartek. I've always said I was just in the right place at the right time is how I got in the computer business. But it was sort of disconcerting a few years ago when Lila Todd, who was my manager from Aberdeen, uh, when I was hired, she said to me, well, you know how you have got to be a computer programmer, don't you? And I said, no. She said, because I told the higher ups that certainly wouldn't be a loss to my group if you left. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me explain that I had only been there a little over a month because I came April 30th fresh out of college and uh, this was now the beginning of June. But prior to Lila giving me this hint, I always thought it was because I wasn't afraid of electricity. Because when they were recruiting the, the last uh, ANIAC programmer, they, uh, Herman Goldstein and a Dr. Cunningham, who had, had been at Harvard uh, College, was at, and now worked at Aberdeen, they were interviewing me. Well, it was pretty obvious. They didn't know what questions to ask. So <laughs> they were kind of hemming and hawing, and finally Herman said, tell me, what do you think of electricity? <laughs> so <laughs> I said, well, I didn't know very much about it, but I'd had a course in physics, so I knew that E equals IR. So he said, no, 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 I'm not interested in that. He said, are you afraid of it? <laughs> so I said, no, I didn't think so. So he said, well, he explained that it was because what I'd be doing would be setting switches and, and plugging cables in and electrical cables in and out of a big machine. So uh, anyway, a few years later, I was talking to an engineering friend, and he said, well, that was a pretty ignorant answer that you <laughs> gave. She said, if you'd had more sense about electricity, you would have said, yes, I am afraid of it. <laughs> so anyway, but I didn't. But anyway, what I say, that no matter how I managed to get in the business, I do believe that once I got there, I did make some contributions. Uh, our great triumph, of course, was the ANIAC introduction of February 15th of 1946. And my partner, Betty Homer, and I had, were responsible for programming the trajectory that ran so beautifully that day. In fact, it calculated the trajectory in 20 seconds that it took she a shell 30 seconds to trace itself. And in fact, John Haller of the Computer History Museum had said it was faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but despite this, and the fact that we did do the, all the programming for the ENIAC, uh, we were never treated as though we knew anything. When the press came, they just had us, had us um, act like models and pretend to set switches and plug in and out cables. And we never, uh, I mean, nobody paid any attention to us or anything else. We were never considered a part of history until, guess what, Catherine Cly Kleiman was uh, graduating from Harvard in uh, sociology. And she was writing her senior paper about women in computing. And somewhere she heard that there were women from the very beginning. So she, call, she decided to come to the 40th anniversary festivities. And that's when I first met her. And then when the 50th rolled around, she called up uh, uh, Steve Brown, who at the University of Pennsylvania, who was in charge of the event, said, what are you doing about the ANIAC women? 
I said, Antioch women? I don't know any Antioch women. So she said, well, let me tell you about them. So anyway, she made a pest of herself, I guess. But anyway, uh, Tom Petzinger, who was a Wall Street Journal uh, columnist, also had heard there were women involved. And so he called Steve Brown also. But he didn't get to talk to him. He just talked to his secretary. So his secretary said, well, you sound like a woman that keeps calling me all the time. Would you like to have her telephone number? So he said, yes. So the two of them got together and began to talk about the Antioch women. And in fact, Tom interviewed all of us before the 50th anniversary. And he came and he had the story, but he really didn't know what to do with it. So. He was trying to decide whether he'd write a book or write a ma magazine article or something like that. Finally, what he did was to write two columns on, in November of 1996. Now, this is 50 years later, and uh, about the Antioch women. Well, guess what? Once the Wall Street Journal wrote articles about it, well, we were very important and all hell broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was interested in the Antioch women all of a sudden. But, uh, by the way, Catherine Kleinman is here with me, so you can meet her if you would like to. And it certainly is an honor for me to join my friends and colleagues, Betty Holberton and Dick Clippinger, who have also read, received awards from the IEEE. I've said Betty was one of my perfect programmers. She was a perfect partner. I said I've had three in my life, and she was the first one as we worked together on the ANIAC and also at UNIVAC. And Dick, of course, led the team that turned the ANIAC into a stored program computer. And he set up a group at the Moore School under my direction to do just that. And you also declared Press Eckerd the greatest engineer of the 20th century. He was certainly a brilliant man. And I've called my years working with him and John Mockley as, at Eckerd Mockley as the technical Camelot and there once was a congenial spot where ideas flowed so freely, designs were done so easily, all of them forgot that uh, frontiers aren't pierced so easily. But no one believed it not in that congenial Camelot. So let me just say that from this farm girl from Missouri, it has, I have certainly had a lot of wonderful experience, and I thank you for this honor.